are back. It's InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Alex Jones. Don't forget, uh, through the month of November, we're offering a 15-day free trial at PrisonPlanet.tv. You can see all of my films, my book, Paul Watson's book, all the expanded extras from my 20-plus films, including Jason Burmes' documentary, Invisible Empire. It's all there at PrisonPlanet.tv. And your support, your subscriptions, funds this growing alternative media operation that is teleprompter free and we are fighting for the future we are fighting for the present we are fighting for the hearts and minds of the people worldwide the only way to defeat the globalist is by exposing the fact that they are completely out of control and do not have the general public's best interest in mind we've got to expose that we've got to educate the people that the new world order is a tyrannical organization that must be defeated now, joining us from New York is investigative journalist and filmmaker, radio talk show host in his own right, Jason Burmas. And he has pointed out that if you go back uh, to a month ago, uh, to the sports writer that finally forced 18 years of cover-up out into the open, Mark Madden, that his investigative piece was titled Sandusky, A State Secret. And you know, going back a few weeks ago, I said this is probably like the Texas Youth Commission report, where the, the Texas Rangers got evidence, tried to stop it, but were blocked by the legislature and discovered that all over the state of Texas, young babies being taken by CPS, but even more prevalent was young teenagers, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 years old in the juvenile justice system at facilities all over the state were being pimped out, pimped out to judges, police, and bigwigs. This is the elite's, I guess, uh, forbidden enjoyment. Most of us vomit to even think about it or begin to have violent feelings towards the pedophiles because I have small children. If I touches my children, you're dead. Not gonna have to wait for court, dead, you understand? And it, it's that old-fashioned attitude that always had these vampires at bay. Now they're in there brainwashing the kids with sex education to test the youth, to see who they can target. They've got their pedophile training group, the TSA, now hitting the streets, pulling families over, groping babies' genitals, uh, your wife's breast. This is all part of an indoctrination program. And with breaking news, Jason Burmes has done some in-depth research into this, uh, now it's starting to come out that it's rumors of donors coming in and raping the children. No, ladies and gentlemen, where there's one disgusting globalist cockroach, there's more. We've seen this in Europe. We've seen it at Bohemian Grove. We've seen it at Skull and Bones. This is what's going on time and time again. The elites are protecting their minions. Even when they get caught, they're getting very light sentences. Just like the judge let him out on a... Uh, $100,000 bond that was not even secured. Unheard of. It should have been at least a million dollar unsecured. Uh, you've now got the big Merck people coming in to try to protect Sandusky and the rest of them. This guy in front of witnesses was reportedly raping children for 18 years in the middle of the field house. This is a widespread phenomenon. We've got a prosecutor who's dead came out missing over this, believed dead, who no billed it. We've got all these other weird deaths, just like the Franklin cover-up. So here to break it down and parallel it to some cases in the UK is Jason Burmes. Uh, we're also going to work to get uh, Mark uh, Madden on. Uh, but this goes to the heart of how pedophiles and other forms of psychopathic control freaks, there's a whole legion of different types of these scum, get together and always want authority so they can carry out their crimes. And Sandusky had his house right behind the elementary school playground. The list goes on and on with these predators. They must be dealt with. You know, I showed a statistic last week. You're five times more likely in government custody as a child to be physically abused, 17 times more likely than any other group to be sexually abused. From my research, around half the CPS workers are hardcore pedophiles. These are dangerous people, folks, but they've got to be faced down. They take kids for no reason from parents they fall down and break a finger or something and give them to, to a group who is known to be the biggest abusers ever. You cannot argue with those numbers. Look them up for yourselves. Just, just Google. 
uh, CPS five times more likely to abuse children than any other group. You'll get the statistics from mainstream news, including Time Magazine, Newsweek. Okay, let's go to Jason Burmas now uh, to, to, to have the floor and break down this tip of the iceberg Sandusky situation and why the system's so desperate to cover this up. Jason, good to have you here with us. Thanks for having me, Alex. Let, well, let's roll it back to where you said the judge let him out on a $100,000 bond. She was heavily involved in the Second Mile Foundation, which this guy founded. Now, you bring it back to Mark Madden. Mark Madden actually broke this story back in April of this year, and nobody paid attention to it. In fact, he was laughed at, and he just kind of took it in stride. Now it breaks loose. He goes on a local uh, talk radio show, a sports show, and talks about how this is the tip of the iceberg, and there are two prominent columnists working on the story of Sandusky and the Second Mile Foundation trafficking in children. And don't think it's not here, folks. Uh, in the UK, for instance, it broke that in uh, July, they convicted a gentleman, 32 years old, Anthony Harrison, and he was trafficking in young girls within the United Kingdom. And he only gets 20 years. What's with these light sentences? By the well, way, tell him what he was trafficking uh, uh, them for. For voodoo rituals, uh, which is extremely bizarre. And in, it, it kind of parallels a case there, uh, which was the first case they ever found, they said, in the United Kingdom of voodoo ritual sacrifice, where a young five-year-old was flown in from West Africa. He was paralyzed. He wasn't given an anesthetic. He was paralyzed through a drug, repeatedly raped, and then dismembered as all of his blood was drained out of him. Who are these people? And why do they have any power whatsoever to cover up these acts? We have to take notice of that. By now, this story should have broke. So I hope and pray that there are good journalists out there really willing to risk their skin because we've had journalists come up dead in the past. If you look at the Franklin scandal, for instance, a guy named Craig Spence, who was, he started his career as a journalist in Vietnam, in Southeast Asia for NBC. He becomes a Republican lobbyist and entangled in this scandal. And he's found dead in his hotel room in 1989, just uh, I think it was days after the story breaks on the front of major newspapers with the credit card receipts of prominent people on the cover and within the story. So this is very important, folks. This, this really, we have to get beyond this church of football and this worship of Joe Pa and Paterno. And believe me, being in upstate New York, I'm only about 70 miles from Scranton. And I've lived in Philadelphia, and this guy is like a god even up here. I mean, people can't believe it. But the bottom line is, if you witness somebody raping a young boy in a shower, how is it that you are elevated to assistant coach? And how is the coach able to maintain his job for well over a decade? Well, you and I know the answer. Everything is compartmentalized. People go along to get along. And the fact of the matter is, this is going to sprawl out into some very prominent people. Well, look, 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 he wouldn't be reportedly, although these witnesses raping people right there in the middle of the field house, which is a very public place for anybody that's played football. If folks don't know, it's, it's coming and going all hours of the day. I mean, this just shows this was mainline. This is somebody obsessed with children. Have you seen the videos of him with high school students when he's, okay. uh, I mean, I, I, I'm, I, where he's grabbing on them and, I mean, it looks like something out of, uh, I mean, it's incredible. But Jason, well, they set these foundations up, Alex, to prey on these young boys. I know you point this out again and again, but we have to be so aware of these supposed charitable uh, organizations. Remember Boys Town. Let's stop right there because let's go back. Uh, you cover this. Uh, I mean, I cover it some in our dark secrets inside Bohemian Grove. But to try to go over all the examples, it would take hours. But in Invisible Empire, by the way, that's on DVD at InfoWars.com if folks want it, or if not, it's, it's, it's free on YouTube. The point is, get it out to everybody. You look at the psychology of the globalists and the crimes they're known for committing, the government drug dealing, the white slavery, the child kidnapping. We really look at their psychology in that film. So go back over that and, and the Jeff Gannon and the gay porn stars uh, and... Uh, all the things that are happening, all the things uh, that are going on, uh, Jason, because this is something that keeps happening over and over and over and over again. And even Richard Nixon talked about it. I mean, it's so frightening. So, uh, please continue. 
Absolutely, Alex, and it's such an important thing. We have to be aware of this. How can we let a predator class that preys on children make executive decisions that affect all of us and have really been raping us and this country for some time now? But let's go over it. This pedophile ring, which I discussed earlier, was headed by a guy named Larry King, not the Larry King from television, but this guy had literally sung the national anthem I believe it was at the 1988 Republican convention. He was an up and comer in the game. And the reason he was an up and comer in the game is he was the main player and pimp for young boys and girls, where he would even bring them in for midnight tours of the White House. A lot of this is chronicled in both the Franklin cover-up and the Franklin scandal. If you want a 60 minute synopsis of this unbelievable tragedy that occurred in our country and is probably still occurring today, especially with cases like this, Alex. And uh, you can check it out. It's called Conspiracy of Silence. It'll blow you away. This was actually made by the Discovery Channel, funded with half a million dollars. And Congress had an emergency session where they funded them not to air this. And the only reason we have this rough copy where scenes are missing and the role isn't really finished is because it was used in court cases. It's, it's really just an unbelievable story. And what's even more unbelievable is it crept its way into Barney Frank, a current congressman in Massachusetts, still to this day, Alex, into his bedroom through a gentleman named Stephen Gobi, who was his boyfriend slash prostitute slash pimp of other young gentlemen right there and at the local Chevy Chase Elementary School, where the superintendent was aware of what was going on. And just to be clear from memory, it's covered in the film, but I have the Washington Post, Washington Times. Some of the prostitutes were underage, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. When you look at the testimony of people like Troy Bonner, Paul Bonacci, these are 14, 15, 16, 17 year old. Yeah, but by the way, well, even younger, but, but I mean, going back, I was talking about Barney Frank specifically. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we have the news clip on the news where they said, Frank got up and said, you investigate me. I'm going to release all the names. And it was shut down. And, and the way Nixon and others described it, you've got to at least just go to the parties where this is going on, not even be part of it, so they know you're compromised. I mean, it's like, I guess, some kind of gangs. I've heard of Mexican mafia, you got to kill an old lady or something to prove you're really evil. Uh, or other groups, you know, you got to kill a kid or whatever. And I guess with this New World Order, it's like a bunch of Nelly Ninnies where you got to rape children to be part of their evil club. And of course, you mentioned Larry King, he was convicted. I mean, this is just so amazing. It's today, Alex. He walks the streets today. How is it in this country in 2011, we let child rapists serve short terms and then go back and do it again? Wait a minute. It's worse than that. Remember five years ago, there was thousands, was it 5,000 missing kids in Florida that CPS had taken? Mm -hmm. And it turned out the top three CPS people in the state were all convicted child rapists. This is mm -hmm. not an accident. This is an army of evil. Absolutely. And it, and it pains me to say, again, these are the people a lot of people look up to. They think are moral. They want to be like. These are the worst of the worst in the predator class that would go after a child sexually and ritualistically in anything you believe. I can't believe another human being would want to bring harm on anybody unprovoked, let alone a young child. How could you live with yourself? You'd have to be soulless, Alex. All right, let's shift gears. Catholic Church, every major country they're in, this is coming out, and cover-ups. Uh, Boy Scouts, 5,000 rapers covered up. I mean, it's every institution. They want to get into institutions because then they know the institutions will cover it up so their names don't get hurt. But in the end, that allows the scum to take over. Government, uh, the military, we now learn about West Point and other things where there's sexual rituals at the higher levels. I mean, it really turns out, just like in ancient Rome, pervert guilds uh, are in control. Uh, where do you see this going uh, with the whole situation at uh, Pedophile Valley uh, there? Uh, I mean, because, you know, the head coach, the president, all of those board of governors, they all now, it, it's coming out new for, for now 18 years, some of them. This was going on, and, and people are saying, well, bring back, you know, the, the coach. Those kids rioted, the college students calling for their God. So what if some kids got, got raped, you know, by a degenerate, uh, ugly old man? Uh, you, you know what? We need our football. I mean, it's just incredible. It's absolutely despicable. And let's talk about another institution real quick, because 
You mentioned the military. You mentioned the Catholic Church. You've mentioned the Boy Scouts. And again, not all Boy Scouts, not all Catholics. They're not all bad people. But predators use these modes, these organizations, again, to prey on these young boys. Well, I watched a clip today from, I believe it was 60 Minutes, a mainline CBS News program. And they were talking to Corey Feldman, famed childhood actor. And they said, what's the biggest problem in Hollywood today to him? He goes, honestly, he's like uh, the pedophilia. He's like, it's not talked about. It's widespread. It was done to me. It was done to Corey Haim. And, you know, he wraps off all these people. And he's like, you know, the guy that did it to me, I guarantee he's going to watch this interview and he's going to sit there and smile. No, he's going to get away with it because these guys have gotten away with it for so long. And these are the heads of our entertainment industry as well, literally feeding us the propaganda that we we consume every day, Alex. And pedophiles may be one half of 1% of the population, and they're trying to now sexualize children, just like they're selling us on torture, TSA groping children. They're trying to change our political and social atmosphere into their cesspool, and they're sexualizing the children as young as five, six, seven, uh, sell, trying to sell outfits to little girls that look like a prostitute's outfit. I mean, it is, it is scientifically done to destroy our society, and it's such a tiny group, but they're the group willing to carpet bomb villages of children, to use DU worldwide. They're the groups willing to genetically engineer the crops, to sterilize the population. And, you know, the way investigative journalist, former federal uh, criminal investigator Greg Palace put it, and he's right, this is just a byproduct of pedophilia. These people are so wicked in the ruling class across the political spectrum worldwide for war, stealing pension funds, evil, that they're just, it's a bunch of evil people competing with each other to take over. So, of course, the most evil are going to be in positions of power. And Palace said the pedophilia thing is just a side deal. That they're all there, uh, I mean, quite frankly, from my research, it, as bad as it is, they're just raping some children. As you pointed out, they're butchering them. Uh, the snuff films that have come out of Europe that have been in the foreign press where they rape little toddlers and then blow their heads off. I mean, folks, this is in the New World Order. And you know what? If they can't get your kids, they'll give them a Gardasil shot to hammer their brain. You understand, folks? They're not playing games. These are literal demons directly out of a Hellraiser vortex. Okay, and they're walking around in suits and ties. They've almost converted the, the police over to being their operatives. They're taking over every institution. Boy Scouts, good organization, being taken over. And, and they must be met, they must be faced. Uh, Jason, people can learn more uh, by watching Invisible Empire. We've also had your Twitter up there for folks. Thank you so much. Look forward to talking to you uh, as this continues to unfold. 60-second uh, final comments on any other facets we haven't covered. Well, I just want people to be encouraged to pursue this story. It's not about Joe Paterno. It's not about football. It's about a callboy ring that a predator set up through a charitable organization and the cronyism that's probably going to get this guy off in the long run. Remember, the judge that put him on bond worked for and with the foundation. We cannot allow justice not to be served in this case, folks. All right, Jason Burmis, great job. Good talking to you. Continue your work. Thank you. All right, there goes Jason Burmis. We're going to go to break and come back with our next guest and some incredible financial news and uh, basically our expert guest prognosis on uh, where the world economy is going. He's predicted so much of what has now been unfolding. We'll be right back. It's InfoWars Nightly News. Don't be